Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. You know, today our concept behind concealed carry is quite a bit different than it used to be. Today, a lot of people are really focusing on having the best possible ballistic package, whether it's a, a full power 9mm and a very small pocket pistol, or actually concealed carrying a full-size duty pistol in 40 or 45 caliber. A lot of people are looking for some real stopping power, as much as you can get in a pistol. Well, a hundred years ago, that wasn't really the case. A lot of people were very comfortable carrying a 32 automatic. Uh, 25 ACPs were very common uh, gentlemen's pistols and pocket pistols. And you even had little tiny baby things like this guy. So this was a style of revolver fairly common about a hundred years ago. This particular one was made in Belgium. Uh, we don't know exactly when. The proof marks give us some hint, and we'll, we'll take a look at those in a minute. But the idea here was to have a very small, uh, unoffensive, easily concealable, and very cheap pistol that would at least... It, it was a gun. It was better than no gun. At least probably better than no gun. So it's chambered in 22 short, which is this little tiny baby cartridge. Six shots. It was single action or double action. It has a folding trigger. You know, on a gun this small, you can see just how tiny this is, um, having a trigger guard would really prevent you from getting one finger in here around the grip, um, unless you had incredibly tiny hands. So instead of dealing with a fixed trigger and a trigger guard, they just made the trigger fold. Trigger folds up like that, stays out of the way, it's not that likely to snag on something, and it allows you to actually hold on to the gun when you're firing. So there is a safety notch on the hammer so that when the hammer's down, even if it's over a live cartridge, pushing on the hammer will not allow it to discharge. Um, let's see. Unloading this, well, let's start with loading, has a little tiny loading gate. The cylinder will rotate clockwise freely, so you line it up and load a cartridge and load like that. Uh, actually, identical to, say, a single action army. Then unloading, we have an ejector rod that lives under the barrel here. You pull it out and pivot it to the side like that, and then just manually run it through each chamber in the cylinder. Again, kind of like a single action army. Um, also very similar to an 1895 Nagant revolver. And that's it for uh, reloading. There we go. This folds back under the barrel. The rod pushes through the, the, bore, the cylinder axis. And there we go. So disassembly starts with in fact, really the only screw that we are going to deal with. We take out the grip screw, which I already loosened up. We can then take out the grips. You can see this interesting way that they set up the grips to uh, be held in place. There's a little flathead screw on each one, and this little tiny cutout right there. So when the grip is in place, it's actually resting, just like that. And then the cutout corner of the grip sits up against the frame like that. When it wants to fit. Not exactly the pinnacle of high craftsmanship here. Uh, the rest of the disassembly. So you can see there are three screws here. Those are the pivots for the hammer, the sear, and the trigger. I'm not going to take those out because I really don't want to mess with it in that much depth. But, so if we flip it over. Uh, to take the cylinder out, I'm going to pull... This is actually the, the unloading, the ejecting rod, which functions like that. We're going to pull that out of the way, and then we have the cylinder pin right here, which pulls straight out, and then the cylinder pops out the side. So there is our fully disassembled little mini revolver. Now there are a couple marks on here that we can see, and that can give us some hint as to identifying the origins of this gun. The first, you can see, I'm actually going to use this screw as a pointer, we have a crown over R. That's a Belgian proof for a rifled barrel. We have a star over U. That is a, an inspector's personal proof mark. So that's kind of like his signature mark. If there was a problem with the guns and they came back, the proof house would be able to tell by that uh, letter, because it would be different for each inspector. They'd be able to tell who had proofed the gun and 
who they needed to talk to. Now on the cylinder, we have that star unit, so that's to be expected. That's the same inspector also checking the cylinder because it's also a pressure bearing part. We have this proof, which is really, really tiny there. And that's a couple letters inside an oval with a crown on top. That was the standard Belgian final uh, definitive proof mark. So that alone says this whole gun as an assembly, it's good to go. Um, and that was instituted, they first used it in 1893. They continued using it until 1968. So that's about the closest we can date this is, it had to be within that range. Uh, now you'll notice there is also a Cal 22L on there. Um, we're firing shorts, but uh, it looks like this was actually feasible for 22 long. On the other side, we just have a 22 marking. And then down here in the frame, we have 22 LG. So that's it, those, we flip the cylinder back over. We've got these five markings three here and two on the frame. That's pretty much all we can tell about this gun. There's no manufacturer's mark. Um, these were made for, boy, there are hundreds of variations of, of revolvers like this made. And uh, there's just not a whole lot of information out there on specifics. So uh, we don't know who exactly made this gun or exactly when. Um, just for reference, we have a 22 long rifle, which clearly does not fit. It's uh, definitely too long and it's hitting the end of the the throat in there. No. no 22 long rifle in this guy. What we will be shooting are 25 shorts and those fit just right. And now I can't get it out. There we go. All right, go ahead and reassemble this. You know, on a side note, these are like safety precaution wise about the most dangerous things out there. So they are so tiny, it is very easy to thoughtlessly point them at someone or something that you don't really want to put a bow on. Like my overly brave cameraman there. Let's put the grips back on. These grips are not all that well fitted, and they take a little bit of pushing and fiddling to get in place. All right, let's do some shooting. So I'm going to go ahead and open the loading gate there. And to start with, I'm just going to put one cartridge in. Boop. So like that. Close the loading gate. Bring that around so I can see on this side. My one cartridge is there. So I don't see that on our target. Let's try another one. So first, go ahead and eject this guy. There we go. Now, put a new one in there. So this originally had a rifled barrel, which we know from the rifled proof mark, but I don't really see. That's a, this is a dummy chamber, or an empty chamber. I don't see any evidence of rifling left in the barrel, so. Let's go a little closer to the target. I still do not see a hole in the target. <laughs> okay. Let's try this again, shall we? There's a hole in the target. All right, guys. I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and load all six chambers in this little pistol and try a rapid fire string. I missed one when I first loaded it. Five. There he is. Number six. All right, rapid fire, double action. 
This thing is so tiny, it's actually kind of hard to hold on to. In, and the trigger is a lot stiffer than you would expect. So getting a hold that allows you to keep a grip on the gun and have enough leverage to manipulate the trigger is actually kind of tricky. Here we go. Not sure what was causing the misfires. However, I'm gonna zoom back just a bit and uh, show people how far I am from the target here. And I don't make any big bones about being a really great shot, but I'm usually a good enough shot to hit a target from six feet. And the only bullet hole in that thing is the one from our very last single test shot. Wait, oh, wait a minute, there's one. All right, so my six round rapid fire string hit this guy once. That first uh, six round speed drill went so horribly badly that we're gonna give it another shot. So once again, I'm at about six feet from the target here. We're gonna try six rounds rapid fire. We're gonna do a mixture of double action and single action this time. And uh, all right, let's see how this goes. Try and get a functional grip on this thing. Here we go. All right, that went a lot better. I actually put five rounds on paper because the sixth round decided not to fire for some reason. And I'm getting better at speed unloading this guy. I think I stand corrected. All of those did fire. We have one, two, three, four, five, six hits. All center of mass with a 22 short. All right, despite being able to actually put six rounds on paper at six feet, I would not recommend one of these for self-defense carry today. Um, you could do it, might scare someone, but uh, I think there are better options out there today. No. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video.